I think sometimes the poems I have lost. Maybe they are lost because I saved the world. Still, they do get lost. And I recall them only when a fragment levitates behind discarded invoices, the black rimmed notice of a last goodbye, a birth, a wedding invitation, and other milestones of a lesser kind. The moment torments, why? Beyond an instant's passion, dubious flash, Satori in a bar, taxi or restaurant, an airport waiting lounge that births this scribble on a stained napkin. A cast of the ephemeral once resonates, then spurns the mind the morning after. All that survives mimics a wrinkled petal pressed between pages of long discarded books. A fallen leaf trapped briefly by the passing sun, it flashes a mere shard of memory, but filled with wistful accusations of abandonment. Too late, no life to it. The book is closed. The moment's exaltation or despair drowned in wine rivers, shriveled in suns of greater wars. I turn these scrapbooks of a moment's truth to cinders, their curlings curse in smoke, once more fugitive beyond recall of usurpers summoned by the morning after. I think of voices I have lost and touches, a fleeting brush of eyes that burrows deep within the heart of me, the pledge unspoken, the more than acts of faith that forge an instant world in silent fact with strangers, deeper, deeper bonds and the dearest love's embrace. quisiera establecer tiene que ver con una cierta afirmación y es como siempre en la infancia somos extranjeros quisiéramos saber cómo fue su infancia en un país de alguna manera colonizado en la que debería sentirse la doble condición de extranjero de ser niño, que es vivir en la periferia, y de pertenecer a un país usurpado. Bueno, well, first of all, uh, in childhood, one was not uh, normally terribly uh, confronted by colonial factors. Because we knew that the rulers were the white people we saw around. Uh, we saw the district officers. We saw an official called the resident. Uh, and we had uh, those quaint uh, colonial traditions, like trooping out of uh, the school on, on what was called Empire Day. Uh, and sometimes on uh, the king's birthday. Uh, for us, these were just uh, reliefs from school. We, enjo we enjoyed them. Marched to the field, um, and saluted the British flag without knowing what it meant. But of course, as uh, one grew older, even in childhood, Uh, one was exposed to conversation among the elders, like my father and his circle of friends, and, uh, uh, like my uncle uh, and my auntie, whom uh, I described in my childhood memoirs, Ake. And we began to recognize the very peculiar relationship between our own people and our political will and, uh, and, the, and the aims of the white uh, officials around us. Uh, but one, one, th one thing, however, and it was through that process that uh, I, I suddenly got my political education. 
I can give you one instance when the uh, bomb, atomic bomb, was dropped on uh, on uh, Hiroshima, and a furious conversation took place between my aunt, uh, Mrs. Ransom Kuti, and and the district officer over the telephone in which she accused the European powers of racism. I remember she was saying, why didn't you drop it on Germany? Why did you go and drop it on Japan? Yeah, I just give that as one of the examples of sudden encounters which made one begin to think. And remember, I was about uh, nine, nine years old at the time. Um, but culturally, it was very rich. Because in spite of the influence of Christianity and the European civilization, one witnessed regularly the manifestations of, one, of one's culture. Um, there was a very vibrant Orisha, Orisha worship. Uh, the pros processions of masquerades. Uh, one listened to the poetry of one's own culture in its own language. Uh, one was able to enjoy the the adroitness with which people used words in the Yoruba. And of course the music was very much integral to one's uh, auditory experience. Even the Christian missionaries, uh, when they wanted to win convert, converts, they, they realized that one of the ways in which they could draw our people into churches, the music to the lyric. So it was a very mixed, rich cultural uh, tradition. Ya usted eh, eh, apreciaba, digamos, el significado de pertenecer a la cultura yoruba. ¿Cómo fue ese primer acercamiento a entender una identidad nacional? Um, I, I don't want to uh, restrict the political education which I received to the external one. Because even within society, there was already differentiation between the traditional powers and the ordinary people. Uh, at a much earlier age, I, I was already uh, observing uh, the mobilization of women against the tyrannical rule of the feudal monarch. Uh, who was eventually chased away by the sheer power of the women and their organization. Uh, so the monarchical system in, uh, in many parts of Africa is, is actually uh, basically democratic. In other words, the feudal monarch had limits and if he exceeded those limits, then either his chiefs or the people rose against. So we've never had the notion of the monarch as absolute power, as, dicta as dictator, no. Uh, and when this Oba, the Alaki of Abelkuta, began to impose uh, onerous taxes on the people, uh, the women organized. My aunt, whom I mentioned, was uh, the moving spirit. My own mother was one of her lieutenants. And at a 
at a very early age, I, f I, I found myself not recruited as such, but I was drawn into the position of acting as a courier between, between the different rioting women. So I, w I was in the midst of it all. And so I learned to distinguish between uh, various forces of society. Uh, there were, of course, never attempted to articulate them as such. But it, it was evident that, that society was not divided between external oppressors and internal uh, victims alone. That there were also contradictions within the anterior society. society yeah, so it's with that basis that you know other other politic aspects of political consciousness were built. I show around pebbles in my mouth, Demosthenes. Not to choke, but half dolphin, half shark, I'm ahead from problems deep. Ride the waves to judge the breakers, they erect, crush impediments of power, and inundate their tinted towers. I show around pebbles in my mouth. I show place nettles on my tongue, Demosthenes. Then thwart its stung retraction. Oh, let it burn at root and roof. Let rashes break from every pore, just so it sear the tyrant's power. With one discharge, I shall place nettles on my tongue. But if hell, oh, where is great Demosthenes? Not all your stoics calm can douse the fiery hairs of that infernal pod. It makes a queen run naked to the world. An itch that tells the world its flesh is hoary sick, I shall place where it be on every tongue. I'll drop some rat stain on my tongue, Demosthenes, to bait the rodent to the kiss of death. I'll seal their fate in tunnels dark and dank, as habitations of their hostages, denied of air, denied of that same light their hands had cupped to immerse their world. I'll drop some rat stain on my tongue. I'll thrust our fingers down the throat, Demosthenes, to raise a spout of bile to drown the world. It's petrified, Demosthenes. May foam to serve the hearts we need. May rasps. This stuttering does not become the world. This tongue of millions, fugitive from truth, I'll thrust our fingers down the throats. I'll let the hemlock pass, Demosthenes. Oh, not between my lips. I've shared a spin dissolving myriad throats at one with that agnostic sage. They did not stutter like the world they left, and I know why. Their lives were spent with heated pebbles on their tongues, Demosthenes. Si bien entiendo en esas luchas, digamos, de los intelectuales de Nigeria contra la opresión, hubo el antecedente de las mujeres como un papel, digamos, que corrieron protagónico de concientización de, 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 del hombre nigeriano. Yes, uh, there's no question at all that um, uh, women, African women, in many instances, are far more politically sophisticated than uh, people imagine. Uh, I remember the Abba women, that's in the eastern part of Nigeria, uh, who also mobilized against the white colonial forces and, f and fought them physically. Um, the the, the in that, the quilt, the political situation there was like a quilt work. When I encounter movements like feminism in, um, in Europe and America, um, there's nothing new to it. And at the same time, I must emphasize 
that there are other societies within, within the African continent which till today oppress the women. Uh, and uh, especially in the Muslim parts in the, of the country, I mean of the continent. So it's, it's, not a, it's not an even thing at all. Una apreciación de un poeta colombiano, Jorge Salamea, que decía que en poesía no hay países subdesarrollados. ¿Qué piensa usted de esa afirmación? Oh, I think it's a, it's a very accurate uh, and just statement. Um, let me cite an example. Um, if you consider the, um, the poetry of this freed slave in America, she wrote in, in very English style, sonnets and so on. And, um, uh, her, her, the quality of her work was such that the Boston uh, in, intellectual circle, uh, the, the intellectual establishment, I should say, uh, they, were, they were convinced that uh, her works, her poetry, must have been written by her master. They felt that uh, no <coughs> No African, no slave child, product, you know, offspring uh, could, could produce that kind of poetry. And, and they even subjected her to tests directly before a panel. <laughs> Phyllis Wheatley. <laughs> and she came from a Liberian traditional society with a long tradition of griot. And, and when, I read, when I first came across this uh, episode, uh, I was so amused that because what the Boston uh, literati, the Boston literati, what they should have, if, if only they had known of her tradition, they would realize that this was a natural, original talent who had brought our own indigenous genius into the, into the medium of English poetry. This is in the 17th century, 17th or 18th century, I can't remember that period anyway. And so uh, we don't even have to look for examples very far to find that where poetry is concerned, uh, uh, poetry is as, is, as is as natural to all societies as the making of things, as the fabrication, as craftsmanship. It's only the medium that is different. Mm -hmm. Poetry uses words. <coughs>
um, as they came more and more under the influence of leftist ideology and ran into expressions for the first time like dialectical materialism, false consciousness, and so on. <coughs> there was a period when they actually began to turn their backs on mythology. Ret reactionary, it was retrogressive. It's, 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 what I call, it's what I call the silly period of African uh, Marxism. Um, and the, the inability to recognize the fact that even, even mythology can be used as a tool of progressive politics. Because within the archetypal world, you have representatives of, uh, of reactionism, of oppression, of, uh, of, of uh, power. Uh, power lost, and and you have on the other the um, the mythology of progressive and uh, of progressive humanity, uh, and all they had to do was choose. But during this period, uh, especially the period immediately after uh, independence, post-colonial. Uh, <coughs> Many writers felt that they had to start a totally new uh, poetic language. But fortunately, that phase is over, <coughs> and, uh, and uh, many have returned to utilizing the images, the metaphors, uh, and the sensibilities which are contained in traditional culture. There's something else which I want to add. Um, I do not make a, a, a distinction or a, a sharp distinction between poetry and other media of creativity, like music, like sculpture, sculpture especially. I mean, these are all manifestations of the totality of culture. Yes. And so as long as those other manifestations uh, exist, uh, poetry must take its coloring from them. Submissive to the year's constraints, the poet tries again the optician's expertise. The placard test begins. One eye obeys all semiotic tests. The other blurs the dots, rapes simple arithmetic. The mind can only total what it separates, but spots the gnat slow crawling on the lens's eye. Next, the literacy test. We'll try this board, shall we? Start with the topmost line. The errant eye descends at best a charming alpha bestiary. K flaunts wings, R wags a furry tail, H sprouts horns, F is unicorn. Rabbit ears adorn the simple U, while others droop from W. C has long closed ranks. He thinks of flawed O-rings. Am I doomed to crash from halting vision? The left eye, boastful, reads in sync the micro printing on the bottom line, but finds the page close held a mindless hieroglyphic smear. The doctor frowns, tugs at his lower lip. His scrutiny suggests a catch. They are both your eyes? I know of no eye transplant in entirety. His sigh is terminal. He tells the poet what other clinics had long diagnosed. Short-sighted in one eye, long in the other. The patient waits. The explosion comes on cue, but not within the limits we call natural. A little difference, that's the norm, but this, these, sir, belong to different pairs of eyes. Shrunken shanks, hoary head, will I look cute in Monaco? 
The poet plans, he hopes, a veto on the optician's line of thought. I hate bifocals. The doctor's laugh is bitter. Your case, sir, goes beyond bifocal remedy. Christ, you think I spend three hours on every client? With eyes like yours, no one could stay in business. A squint would make some sense because your eyes, sir, are at war with one another. They harmonize at certain magic intervals. Don't ask me how. They are your eyes, not mine, or so you claim. A sharp, derisive snort affirms the doubt. Magic intervals. The patient feels consoled, no longer isolated as a visual freak. That sounds poetic, he reflects. Harmonize at magic intervals. All other clinics diagnose a vein. None till now has found a virtue in my visual cross. You make it sound akin to poetic vision. The doctor's voice is strained. My cross, sir, is to find the right prescription for your sight. Myopia, astigmatism, etc., those modes of vision fill my register. There is no poetic vision. The buzzer from front desk recalls him to his waiting patients. His shoulders sag. Come back tomorrow. I may summon a second opinion. The receptionist will find a vacant slot, I hope. One slot, best, makes it th best make it three or five. Maybe we should allot one entire morning to your eye. Yes, a second opinion. Two heads are better than one. His laugh, the patient thing, sounds faintly manic. Ha ha, two heads. Yes, in your case, how true. Four eyes, the perfect answer. Sixteen combinations. That should cover all your magic intervals. Behind the doctor's antiseptic stare, the patient reads experimental lust and flees the clinic never to return. Today, he roams the streets, surviving on his own prescription, one eye patch woven of gossamer's canes from that charmed loom that spun images of new clothes for the emperor. And for the other eye, a conjured prism, herding riots of signals into a parsimonious lyric impetus spaced at magic intervals. Me parece que hay un rasgo que en medio de los poemas, inclusive más políticos, el humor aparece como una constante, la ironía, y en algunos momentos también aparece en su dramaturgia. ¿Qué lugar le da usted al humor en la poesía africana? Uno de los positivos, los strengths of the, um, of uh, African creativity, and I speak of whether it's Igbo or Yoruba, or even uh, uh, in uh, East Africa, for instance, uh, is, is its recognition of the absurd aspect of existence. It's expressed even in, most robustly in the pantheon of the Yoruba. Their deities, for instance, uh, like, like Ishu, uh, who exist to puncture the sense of excessive solemnity of human beings. Uh, Ishu exists always to remind us that even kings can, can slip on the banana skin. And I think it is this that I have absorbed in my own work, uh, the, the traditional poetry is full of this, theater is full of it, uh, just as you have in the, in the ancestral masquerade, for instance, which is, which, which is basically a solemn, uh, a solemn medi medium of theater, there are also ma masquerades which are clowns, which are satiric figures, uh, which exist, in fact, to dramatize the foibles of existing. Sometimes I even say that uh, 
the, the Italian uh, Commedia dell'arte, uh -huh. with all its figures of Alecchino and so on, that Italians must have stolen the Alecchino mask uh, 